I'm a visual journalist, and you might not meet another one like me. I mean, and I'm a black visual journalist. So go ahead, take a picture. Because we're disappearing. It's the world's greatest profession and yet one of the toughest. Those of us who are fortunate enough to have picked up cameras do so because we care. Capturing moments at 10 thousandths of a second that we hope reach your eyes, your minds, and your hearts. When we frame those images by bringing cameras, either still or video, analog or digital, up to our eye, our view of the world becomes restricted separated only by a tiny piece of glass that reveals to us a canvas ready to receive the fleeting moment. See, visual journalists are trained for that moment. Too soon, and the moment hasn't fully developed yet, but too late, and it's already gone. The most successful can keep their heads about them at the apex of extreme joy and in the valleys when the world is paralyzed by extreme tragedy. We see the highest highs and the lowest lows of the human condition. We feel those moments and aspire to make you feel them too. With the pound of pressure, our finger hits the shutter. Pixels are encoded. Those images give us a record of history, a reason to act. They'll change the way you remember those important events forever because what we paint on our canvas allows you to trust us because we help show you things you couldn't see. Sadly, visual journalists are often the first to be let go in their newsrooms. A study on the state of photography shows that over 50% of visual journalism positions have vanished in the last 15 years. What that means is that collectively we lose our trusted messengers who are able to translate thousands of words in seconds. Combine that with an industry that struggles to reflect the diversity of the communities that it hopes to serve. I'm like a rare Pokemon out here, bruh. <laughs> the on-ramps to the industry for diverse voices are really impossible to find. For those lucky enough to get on the road, they face about as smooth of a ride as being on any of Michigan's pothole-written streets. <laughs> I survived about 10 years in the business before the realities of shrinking visual newsroom departments hit me in 2021. I was doing some of the most consequential work of our time, documenting a coronavirus pandemic, the community's response to the death of George Floyd, protests after the killing of Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery, seeing people assault our Capitol on January 6th, and documented police officers who have tried to do the right things, but who were afraid of the retaliation they would suffer at the hands of their own for whistleblowing. And I experienced it all on the front line through my viewfinder that little piece of glass in my camera. I was doing some of my greatest work, some of my most important work, but along the way, I felt emotionally and personally abandoned, isolated. I felt like I was tired of documenting trauma. Can I photograph like some puppies or some kittens, something? <laughs> but I held it all in because I was told, as a professional journalist, you have a pure stance of objectivity to remove yourself from what you were documenting, to keep an emotional cap on yourself for the sake of professionalism. My colleagues all have different ways of coping. Some of those ways aren't so healthy. It's important that we protect ourselves, that we 
balance everything that floods our limbic brain on a daily basis. One of the ways that I started to learn how to cope is by going to the movies. <laughs> you know, we do the same thing, visual journalists and filmmakers, storytelling. Without the $100 million budgets <laughs> or the penthouse in Hollywood Hills, the accountability for sustainable diversity, equity, and inclusion practices, or the government incentives. <laughs> but we make magic. We both make magic. And I ain't gonna lie, I be crying at movies, bro. Oh, I be crying. There's something about going into that theater, the lights turn down real low. You're surrounded by the sound of the narratives that play out on screen. And it's similar to when visual journalists pull those cameras up to their eyes. Our view of the world is restricted. We see the highest highs and the lowest lows of the human condition, but something's different at the movies. That little piece of glass, that glass is gone, and along with it, any responsibility to be professional. I lay down my duty and commit myself to what I see on screen with no barrier in between. I marvel at the brilliance of my favorite cinematographers and directors who speak fluently in a visual language that I completely understand, but have only ever associated with restraint. And I cry. Part of me cries because in movies, people get their happy ending. Solutions are simple. Marry the girl. <laughs> Admit you were wrong. And OMG, you idiot, run the other direction. That creep is trying to get you. <sighs> Silly, make it make sense. <laughs> and then sometimes when it's a character that looks like me, it lets me know that fairy tales are actually possible. Sometimes I cry because what we do helps connect people. Do you remember the last time you were in a theater, a theater full of strangers, by the way, <laughs> but somehow joined into the chorus of applause as our heroes came on screen triumphant? <laughs> Part of me cries because I know this movie's gonna end. And I'll have to go back out into the world where solutions aren't so simple. Things aren't so easy. And I'll have to experience it again, desensitized through that little piece of glass. I decided to leave newsrooms in order to pursue the things that I still loved about this business. And I can't front, I miss it. <laughs> But the exchange for me is that now I can weep openly as I teach students how to make magic with their cameras for the first time. See them swell up with pride and joy as they turn to their friends and smile and point at the screen and say, I made that. I share kudos on social media when I see something that moves me as a reminder to my fellow storytellers that I see them and the tolls they pay to keep us informed, to keep us engaged with democracy, to spread joy and spark change so that we can feel real life and figure out all of our complicated solutions. You know, we should support visual journalists like we do our filmmakers. Heck, a popcorn in a movie is about $25 these days. Imagine if you were to invest that into people reporting locally in your community. Our visual journalism communities need your financial support so that we can keep doing our work, so that we can train a generation of journalists who look and reflect everyone who we share the world with who identify with your values, and who can report in your communities with respect and tact. Or, we might not be around long enough to keep making magic. And movies will serve 
as the only reminder we have of what our world once was. I'm a visual journalist. You might not meet another one like me. I mean, and I'm a black visual journalist. So go ahead, take a picture. Because we're disappearing. You know, if we do go extinct, I don't know what replaces us. Some type of AI, maybe. I just hope that you share this and you remember what we did, how we fought back our tears to help you see past that little piece of glass because we cared.